radio video. Boogie with a suitcase. What did you guys do, man? You missed last week. What's this? Li <laughs> What's the line? Uh, this, you missed all, all last. Season. You missed all this season. Okay. Uh, this, is, this is the last episode. You know, this is the season finale, right? So this is the season finale. Yeah. Okay. You missed the whole season. It's the best season of Graveyard Cars in the history of the series. Here's an idea what you, it's, it's So here's what you missed. What the f man, you missed the whole season? Are you in out your mind? At Graveyard Cars, it's your last chance, man. Your last chance to pop music. <laughs> Radio video, boogie with a suitcase. Go living in a disco. Forget about the rat race. <laughs> We're coming back on the air. Last time on Graveyard Cars. I have been looking for my old original high school Dodge Charger. I have put multiple posts on our Facebook page. I have taken out classified ads. You had that car in your inventory. This wrecking yard down in Texas did have my old car. I am on standby to find out Lay it on me. What's that mean? This station will remain on the air on this episode. This is it. This is the big one. This is the biggest day in Graveyard Cars history. It's a T7 dark turbine bronze. It's the first time we've ever done it. The Graveyard Cars SEMA 2020 build. Coming to get you, Barbara. In Springfield, Oregon. Dead Mopar muscle cars are coming back to life. Restored by Mopar master Mark Warman. I'm a liar and a bat now. His daughter, Alyssa Rose. <laughs> Why would you do that? His painter, Will Scott. Got one dog. And his cousin, Dougie. Oh, hi, Welcome back to Graveyard Cars. Lay it on me. What'd you find out? Okay. What's that mean? What is that? And you have the the papers back from the DMV on that? Well, it's not your fault. Yeah, it's okay. Appreciate it, and uh, you have a, a good day. Good evening, I guess. Okay, bye-bye. Well, so, sucks. Long story short, uh, she confirmed that they did crush the car and so it's out of the, it's out of circulation, <laughs> is what they say, and so, you know, it's, I wanted you to see the real reaction, it's okay. So, there you go, live. Should have, should have Facebook live this thing. You know what I'm saying? Everybody at home wanna watch. Wanna watch the ice tree. I love it. Grab that right there, just in case anybody's wondering. So, brand ambassador. They can't crush that, can they? Crush my dreams, crush my car, ain't gonna crush that, so. A few seasons ago, we featured a 1969 Dodge Charger RTSE. Now, the special edition was available on the RT package. What there's not a breakdown of is how many were built with a four-speed. We have the total number of RTSEs, but we don't know how many were built with an actual four-speed. This is one of those four-speed cars. It's speculated less than 50. That could be true, it could not be true, but based on registered known vehicles, it's probably pretty accurate. Today I'm getting ready to do the pre-paint on the body on our 1969 RTSE Charger. It's a T7 dark turbine bronze. Gorgeous color, it's the first time we've ever done it, so I'm super excited to get in there and get the paint worked out on it. It's a beautiful color. I, the older I get, the more I really appreciate some of the oddball colors that as a kid I wanted bright orange, bright yellow. Now I really start to appreciate some of these fine, rich colors that Chrysler offered. The first thing I'll do is I'll go in there and put the DP90 on it. And that's great because if you have any breakthroughs with bare metal, it'll, it will adhere to it or paint won't. And then on top of that, it's kind of used like a sealer. So it'll fill any little imperfection, light sanding scratches and whatnot, and then we'll be ready for our color. The car also had a black vinyl top a black bumblebee stripe in the back. Now, because it's an SE and it's an RT, it gets the wood grain dash and it gets leather seats. So when it's all done in totality, this is going to be a stunning 
69 RTSE factory 444 speed car. And by the way, just for fun, it is numbers matching. Right now, everybody is in the uh, kitchen area, the diner, waiting for me. I was going to share with them the good news that I had found my charger. Uh, as it sits right now, that's not such great news because I did find it, but it looks like it's crushed and gone. But that's okay. I, I know how to put my happy face on because as a leader, that's what you have to do. The last time we were, we were here, what was it? The, hey, I need you to build a car in 45 days. Hell yeah. And then I'll give you guys a big bonus if you stay and get it all done. Didn't hear about that part. Oh, yeah, me neither. <laughs> Nor did I. So anyway. So who knows? What's the matter, George? I hope it's not another 45-day build. Because you put the team behind when you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not my fault. Yep, it's got a little extra man. things wrong. You guys, with real quick, right there. There's right. my man. The camera is never letting a person have it. Hey, of humanity. hey, look you at this. Look at this. Hi, Mark. You love the camera. Don't play. No, well, I don't love the camera. Yes, Mark, you do. Okay. Well, why don't you sit up like a regular adult? You're sitting over there. You're all indigent looking. Okay. See, you start to bring me down. I was so happy. So I just wanted to let everybody know that I've got a little bit of good news and a little bit of not so good news. Now, I'm going to give you the bad news or not so good news first because it's going to make the good news that much better. Notice how it's about lunchtime. Yeah, you we're gonna miss lunch. Look at old George perk right up. Yeah, he doesn't look tired anymore, does he? This is about my charger. So you guys all know, everybody in the world out there in TV land knows about my 1970 Dodge Charger. The good news, I did find it. The bad news is, it didn't turn out well. So I just want to let you guys know because I'm gonna be making a post on Facebook that it's uh, hasta la vista, baby, and that's the end. It's too bad because the Dream Maker should have had his own dream come true, but I guess I don't. I don't deserve to have dreams come true. You have us. Yeah, yeah. So here's the good news. I've, you guys have done a phenomenal job this season, and I'm buying everybody lunch from Finn's. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah, don't jump up and down too much. You don't over at Will. At least a thank you or something. Thanks. OK. Thank you. So. Thank you. Sorry, uh, sorry I couldn't be bringing you better news. On the other hand, I'm going out to your house tonight in Lowell, Will, and I want to have a little Thanks discussion. Thanks for telling everybody. <laughs> I want to have a discussion with Heather. Right. Yeah, I'm going to be out in the yard like Mr. T did. Right. Hey, woman. Hey, woman. And then when she walks out on the porch, I say, why don't you bring your pretty little self on over to my place tonight, and I'll show you what a real man is. And then you get all mad, Ooh, and you come at me. But then uh, uh, Mickey jumps in the middle and says, he'll knock you into tomorrow. You know, Mark's insane. He's got the stupid shirt on. He's calling out Heather. Best part about this is we just bought a house in the country. He's got no idea where I'm at. Only a couple people do, and that was for a reason. He's never, ever, ever invited out to my house or given the address of where I'm at. I have some very, very exciting news for all y'all at home. The Graveyard Cars SEMA 2020 build is a 1972 Dodge van, half ton. It will be featuring a 392 Hemi and a Silver Sport automatic transmission. Well, what's that? That's just, when well, you build an old street van, you just come build one of the old custom street van, which I would, and that would be cool. This one's a little different. This one is a duplicate to the Hot Rod Magazine giveaway. 1972 of the Yamaha Hauler. That's right, folks, the Yamaha Hauler, the one-off 50-foot shark everybody's heard about and nobody's seen in real life because nobody knows what happened to the original one. This was a 72 Dodge van that was converted over to haul motorcycles. This was a joint effort to build the coolest motorcycle hauling van that the world had ever known. Remember, the 70s was van, all about vans. Yamaha got together with Dodge, got together with Hot Rod to promote it. You had King air conditioning in there. The Krager Screamer wheels, which I just happen to have a set for, which are impossible to find, but I found them. All adding up to the 2020 Graveyard Cars SEMA show, which ironically has been canceled. So that doesn't affect us. We are going to have the van ready to go for the SEMA show 2020 that doesn't exist. That means you'll actually see it at SEMA 2021. It'll be in the Mopar booth like we always have. We're going to bring some of our other cars down. 
We'll have the Little Dead Wagon. We'll have the 1,000 horsepower Christine badass car. We might even bring up our old 71 392 car that we did the very first SEMA that I ever went to. So it's gonna be a blast. So SEMA, we've had so much fun down at SEMA over the years. It's the show place for everybody. I know that it is insider jobber only, so like the public can't get in there to see it unless you know somebody. I hope they change that someday because this is such a fantastic show. It's so over the top. It's so best of the best that you actually can go from a mind-blowing car that you look at and you go, how did they even build that thing? Let alone how did they build it with this show in mind? Completely have your socks blown off. Say, wow, that was it, I'm ready to go home. Just to walk to the next booth and see the exact same crazy over the top. I mean, it is the best of the best builders in the world, past and present. They have a whole group of young gun competitions that are there every year. They'll be running that place in 10, 20 years and be shuffled from this mortal coil. But when you walk around every vendor in the world, that has anything to do with automotive, and in some cases, it's a stretch that they have anything to do with automotive, are there. They are the biggest names, all the stars and the celebrities. Now, I don't get into all that stuff, but it's kind of fun. I've got lots of pictures with me with different talent from the other shows, and uh, I, think it's, I think it's such a fantastic bonding moment that every year, as soon as SEMA's over, I begin thinking about the next SEMA. That's how Christine was thought of when I was driving back from the last SEMA that had just finished, and I thought, what's the baddest car in the world that I could put the baddest crate engine in? It was Christine. So for a few weeks a year, the world, the automotive world stops. It sits down, gets a nice big tub of popcorn and a soda pop, and watches SEMA, the greatest show on earth. If you recall back a couple of seasons ago, Alyssa and I worked on decoding the fender tag on a 1970 Dodge Charger RT, the B7 blue with white interior, 440 automatic air conditioning car. The engine and drivetrain that Doug is working on now go into that car. The metal work is basically done on the car. It's working its way through the mudroom. We are always ahead in the machine shop compared to the rest of the shop. This is a numbers matching 440 HP, 375 horsepower U-code engine, E86, if you're looking for the alphanumeric sales code. The engine has been built out, the long block has been painted, now it's time to dress it out. That's what Doug is doing today. This is an air-conditioned car, so bear with me. It's gonna be a bear to put this one together. I'm gonna go ahead and install the distributor first thing. Got my rotor faced at the number one spark plug position. Put our distributor cap on. It's got a little notch in it right here. Click it in place. Here's our tie down. Holds the distributor in place. So I have my distributor in place. So before I put the plug wires on, they give you this handy little kit with dielectric grease. The thing that we try really hard to do at Graveyard Cars is to emulate the assembly line. If they use the dielectric grease, we use the dielectric grease. And you rub it around the porcelain on the spark plug. This helps the plug boot go on the porcelain a lot easier. Making sure that the spark plug wires have the correct date codes and the correct routing, very important. So here's our number eight spark plug wire. Goes over the top of the valve cover, comes around the back of the head. It's the only one that does that. Push it on and twist till you hear it click. So here's our number one. We're gonna put number eight right next to it, right in there like that. Make sure it lays smoothly and then put your little retainer Pop it in its little bracket. Keeps it from blowing out against the manifold or anything else. Okay, there's number eight. Now I'm doing number seven, which is the next longest. That's gonna be the back on the driver's side. There, snapped right in. The firing layout on the engine is driver's side, forward bank, all the way forward is one, two is across, three, four, and five is over here. Third one back, driver's side is number five. We are putting them back exactly the way the manufacturer did. So having the correct parts on the engine with the correct date codes is imperative if you're saying, I'm gonna have an OEM restoration. Now we've got the whole driver's side plug wire installed. It is really cool to work with these brand new parts with date codes from back in the day. All the correct numbers on all these parts it's 
really nice to work with all this stuff. When I was a young fella, probably around 14 years old, I dreamed of this motorcycle. I wanted one of these so bad. Couldn't have one then, but I got one now. The year is 1976. The make is Hodaka. What model is it? If you've been watching Graveyard Cars, you may know this answer. Is it Super Rat, Dirt Squirt, Road Toad? Think you know the answer? Stay tuned after the break. We'll find out. All right, ghouls, how did we do on that one? Now, the question is, what model is this 1976 Hodaka? Dirt Squirt, Super Rat, Road Toad. The color might have gave it away. It is a road toad. So if you guess that, you are absolutely correct. Now, they did make a super rat. I'm not a connoisseur like probably a few of you out there are, but I know that they made a super rat and I know that they made a dirt squirt. I didn't care much for either one of those. For me, it was the road toad, probably the color because I'm colorblind, I can't see a lot. So when I see a beautiful yellow like that, I just, I'm just kidding, it's green, I know. <laughs> so, oh yeah, by the way, I know what you're thinking. What's that got to do with Mopar? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. That's what making 200 episodes of a successful show allows you to be able to do. Mark, you're Wait wrong. You see the next true or false. That's going to be a blast. Mark Mormon man's ice tray. <laughs> you're a real player, audience. Now that I got the DP90 done, I go back in, start laying out my color. Um, this is a highly transparent color, so when, when we do these, it's one of those things, just kind of slow down, take your time, get those extra coats on for coverage. But I am anxious getting this thing done, getting it cleared, and then getting that black top on it, along with the black stripe and then the black interior. It's really gonna be a gorgeous car. Before I send our Yamaha hauler down to the garage, I need to make sure that they have all the tools that they need, not, not physical hand tools, but that the doors have been fit and rebushed. All the hinges need to be rebushed. They need to be squared to the openings. They don't need to spend six months cutting and welding and making things fit. So I spent the time before I had it media blasted fitting every single panel, making sure that the latches and the mechanisms all worked right. Because when you're doing a body job on a car, putting mud on there, you don't want to fight with trying to get the door open and try to get it shut. You want all that alignment done before you begin laying out the mud. That's where we're at now. The van has been epoxied, which protects it after it was sandblasted. Next time we see it, it's going to be 1972 Yamaha Yellow. Okay, so I'm gonna set this Beautifully restored carburetor from Harms Automotive on. They do a beautiful job. It just looks as nice as these engines when they're done. I just love these carburetors. Guide it over the choke rod right there. You gotta put this on first because of all the linkage, the way it fits. You can't put it on afterwards. Got the choke installed over here. Line up the carburetor. So here's my fuel line. Goes in right there to the top of the carburetor inlet. Choke rod's gonna set right in there. Choke just closed. The fuel system on the 440 HP and the 426 Hemi are a bit unique. They use a fuel vapor separator. This is a small can that mounts to one of the fuel pump bolts. It has a 5 16th line going into it, 5 16th line going out of it, and a quarter inch vapor or fuel return line that takes the unused fuel that didn't go into the carburetor and sends it back to the tank. So our 1971 Barracuda, that's going to be a Hemi Cuda tribute car, really has moved nicely through the shop. And I hope everybody has enjoyed the build as we have done it as such. There's so many pieces and it takes so much time. And I know there are things that people want to see that we just can't take time to show. We, we try, but we have to gloss over some of it. But to date, 
we were able to build a car completely from scratch, except for a used roof assembly, and we talked about that at great length. We did floors, pans, rails, wheelhouses, quarter inner structure, trunk floor drop-offs, rear body panel, A pillars, B pillars. All of these things allowed us to be able to put a roof on it and have it be a what you would call the rear clip of the car, although the front frame rails are on it. So with the rear body built out from the firewall back, we can put the front aprons on. This is a really intricate part as well. When you're talking about installing the aprons, or the inner fenders, if you will, it's important that they go in space, just like everything else does, where they go. What we do is make sure by pre-fitting a fender on there, after we put the apron in place, we already did that earlier with George when we pre-fit the whole car out. So now it's just a matter of installing all the pieces. Once the inner fenders are in place, we can start working on the core support. You have a core support with two side baffles, a bottom and a top. Those go in and also establish where the fenders will go on the car adjacent to the inner fenders, adjacent to the doors and the rest of the car. Putting these pieces on the car, taking your time, cross-measuring, fitting, don't get in a hurry. You put them on slowly and carefully, and when you are done, you will have a car that looks square and true and is ready to move through to the massaging part. And that is where our 1971 Barracuda is now. A little tiny dancer. Little, I call him Little Tiny Dancer. You hold him close to Tiny Dancer because he's little about four foot something tall. Mark, I'm five foot. Yeah, something. yeah, yeah. Five foot. Count the headlights on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> covering up the little dead wagon. Who's covering up the little dead wagon? Who's covering up the little dead wagon? I'll tell you who's covering up the little dead wagon. Who? Little Tiny Dancer. Let's just go with TV. Yeah, yeah. Little tiny. Make sure that you know I'm neurotic. Make sure that thing's straight. Yeah. <laughs> You're a real player, Mr. Gondaz. Hold me close to tiny dancer. Count them Count headlights, them headlights on, on the highway. Lay me down on a bed. Doing something with John Lennon? Lennon? I don't. Well, they were. I know you've had a long day. If you guys recall, uh, back in the day, our Phantom Cuda, we had a generous offer from our friends at the AMD Installation Center, Craig. He, he knew we were in a big trouble to get cars done way behind, and he had volunteered to do all of the metal work on that car. Well, the situation with the garage is very similar. Last summer, we had a guy by the name of Noel with his family come in to see the shop. He wanted to check out the shop and the gift store, and so I came up and met him and shook hands. And we started talking a little bit, and he let me know that he was a partner in a body shop. And they volunteered to help us out with our Yamaha hauler, which is a big job. It's a big job whether or not you have 100 other cars waiting to go through or not. So it was a very generous offer, and I immediately took him up on that. When he approached me with this and said, hey, do you want to team up on this project for SEMA and Mopar? I think I, I spent all but two seconds to say, hell yes. It was a no-brainer, I mean, without even talking to my business partner. We're teaming up and we're doing a SEMA project, a 72 Dodge Yamaha hauler. You know, pretty rare build, something special that you don't see every day. We've already started some of the prep work and the, the body work here. You know, it came about two weeks ago and we jumped on it right away. We were that excited about it at our shop. Even though you have somebody willing to help you out in a situation like this, we're still graveyard cars. We are still known as the best Mopar restoration place in the world. So that means the body and paint work that's done in that van needs to look like we did it. We could have gone anywhere, but we selected the garage based on their reputation and their history. They do what we do on all kinds of cars. Mark was very specific about the material to be used, the level of quality work that he wanted from us. I think there's always a level of stress, especially knowing that, you know, Mark Warman and, and graveyard cars, and there's that certain aspect of, you know, we want to perform properly and make sure that everything's done right. I, I think Mark picked the garage looking at not only our rapport, but looking us up. I think he quickly realized that we were the shop that can take on this type of project. You know, we're definitely known not only in our area, but outside of uh, just our city alone. Uh, we've been around for a long time and we have a great reputation. Uh, you know, our first reaction was, hell yeah, let's do it. 
I will admit that it's uh, a bit of a stress reliever to have a partner on a on a SEMA bill. SEMA bills always come down to suicide shifts three weeks ahead of time. And that's usually because the body and paint isn't done until two weeks before the show. So in this particular case, to have somebody to collaborate with, somebody that I trust, like the garage, it's a blessing for us. Yes, I killed Mark in season 12. It was me, and I did it all for this. But that award is just a useless lump of plastic. Why on earth would you kill my dad over it? I mean, a car out back, I understand. <gasps> Can it be? The priceless Panther Pink Diamond, manufactured by Walter P. Chrysler himself in 1925, and then later stolen from his Sleepy Hollow mausoleum following his death in 1940. I thought it was a myth. What? I read it on Wikipedia. That's right. It was right under your noses the whole time. And now it's mine, all mine. I'll be rich. All right, boys, I think we've heard enough. What do you think? More than enough for me, sir. Royal, I'd like to introduce you to David Starsky and Kenneth Hutchinson, undercover detectives for the Springfield Police Department. We're undercover cops and celebrity impersonators. Here's our card. We do birthdays and county fairs, and we've been wearing wires this whole evening. We've got everything on tape. You're busted. Mark, but how? You better check your aim next time, buddy. That shot didn't even come close to hitting the vital organ. It was the concussion that knocked me down. When I woke up, that's when I noticed my award was missing. Didn't take long to put the pieces together and figure out exactly what's going on. I know you. I knew you wouldn't admit to anything. I knew these idiots couldn't keep their mouths shut. So I faked my death and hired these gentlemen to help me catch you in the act. What I didn't count on was you roping in my own cousin into your twisted game. Cuff them, boys. Damn you, Mark. I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for your meddling detectives. Well, that's it, folks. You can all go home. I'll see you back at the shop tomorrow. Why was Dougie pretending to be blind this whole time? And then he was dead time? at one point, and what then was he the wasn't. Point? How did was that a point about Mark's voice? And how did he get his did, hands in that jungle on a haunted mansion? Were you guys that recording? What was the deal with Lola? If Roy was disguised as was Tony, overkill. and Tony was with us in the dining room, who was controlling the lights? And how did he mimic Tony's voice? Are we getting paid for any of this? Asleep watching your movie. Oh, yeah, I did. What do you need? We're supposed to do parts at one. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That is crazy. Couldn't believe it. Can't believe this weird dream. I had this dream that we were all cartoon characters. Like, okay. I was a cartoon character. You were a cartoon character. Mom was a cartoon character. Dougie was a blind butler. We were at this like mansion, this weird haunted mansion. What? And, and I had been murdered. Yeah, you I had murdered? been murdered by your mom. Well, I mean, that tracks. Yeah, yeah. I don't Makes know how sense. that tracks. You had that it's, one coming. What did I I'm do? Sure. I, well, I wasn't in the dream. I don't know. It was but a freaking sure dream. Did right? I didn't do anything. Nothing? In the dream, I got shot for doing nothing. It's very much like real okay. life. Can no, we just get some that. parts ordered? Yeah, Great. that sounds good. Are you going to sleep on the job? Dan no. was there, Lynch. There's a guy named Gambo there. And uh, Jim McLean, who I don't, I don't know, something, I don't know what that was all about. It just was so weird. It's like surreal. Go. 
Got my engine harness in place. I've got the lower bracket bolted in place. I'm gonna set the alternator in, and it takes two field wires, which just clip on, and we have our idler pulley for the air conditioning belt. Here's my hot lead to the alternator, and it's gonna go right on this post here. We also use this little plastic isolator, so that's gonna go on this post and then the wire's gonna go on, so it's protected from grounding. Things are going pretty good. I've got all the plug wires installed. That went pretty smooth. I've put the carburetor on, the fuel line, and the fuel vapor separator. Getting ready to put the hoses on. We'll go ahead and finish out the rest of the build on the front of the engine. These are a reproduction hose that even has the ribbing on the back side, just like the originals. So this is your heater hose. It's gonna go to the firewall, and it's gonna go on the water pump right here. Got a new remanufactured power steering pump here. Okay, so now we can install the air compressor from Classic Auto Air. We'll give it a test fit. Hope for the best here. So now we've got our air compressor bolted in place. Now I can put my front pulleys on. The lower crank pulley is four different pulleys versus one or two. That is two go to the air conditioner, one go to the idler, and one go to the power steering. We have a really nice, clutch fan here with the correct date code. So now I'm gonna put the AC belts on. You have to feed these over the fan, put them over the air conditioner pulley, down around the lower crankshaft pulley, up over the alternator, which is a double pulley for an air-conditioned car. I'm just gonna pull that up and tighten those belts. Next, we have our power steering belt, and then your small belt for the fan it's got a square hole in the idler. I love it. Here's our breather that's gonna go to the air cleaner. Just pops in the valve cover. Finally got the 440 engine for the 70 charger done. We'll be putting this in the car pretty soon. Been a long time since Mark and Royal drove around in one of these. <laughs> I look over there and it's 1978 all over, my little friend. Except the, except the hairline. You had more hair back in 78, but in fairness, I did too. I noticed mine's all wispy now. Do you remember standing out in the front yard washing that top? I remember washing the whole thing over and over <laughs> again until it came clean. That top, we use all of Mom's Ajax on it. Oh, she was mad. Royal said she was mad. She wasn't mad. I don't know what he's talking about. Sometimes he, you know, there's some things going on in his head that he did when he was younger that affect his memory. Mom was never mad. Mom was thrilled to death. She told me later, she said, but at the same time, she was standing in there looking out that window at us, and she really, she was so tickled for me, you know, looking at <laughs> us, out there working like a couple of dogs trying to get that old car to scrub up. And even when she was sick, uh, right before she passed, we had a conversation about this, about, I said, do you remember the day I brought the charger home? Well, I'm not a fool, of course I remember. <laughs> Gets mad if she thinks she forgot something, right? And she recited it back to me the same way I'm reciting it to you. So it happened, it was real, and it was a you know, wonderful, wonderful memory. You wanna pick up some lunches for everybody? Yeah. Let's do it. My favorite little 1976 Hodaka Road Toad, we learned earlier. Not only is it one of my favorite bikes of all time, it is an identical twin to one used in one of my favorite movies of all time gentleman that wrote it was only 14 years old at the time. True or false? The name of that movie is Christine. Think you know the answer? Stay tuned after the break. We'll find out how you did. Yeah, it ain't got nothing to do with Mopar. <laughs> Deal with it. All right, guys, how did we do on that one? I, I know it wasn't a Mopar question that's unfortunate it's too bad sue me the question was this 1976 hodaka road toad is a twin to a motorcycle used in one of my favorite movies true or false that movie is christine if you guess that is true well you're wrong there weren't any motorcycles in the movie christine at least that i can remember now one of my other favorite movies is the car with james brolin based on a Stephen King novel. There was a motorcycle in it. It happened to be a Suzuki TS400 Apache. But the real answer on this one is the movie Phantasm. With a young actor at the age of 14 years old, A. Michael Baldwin, riding this motorcycle 
in and out of a cemetery while the little gremlins was chasing him. So, I don't care. I know it ain't about Mopar. It don't got to be about Mopar. It's my show. So what's it take to get you back, man? We admit, you have so many fans that ask about you all the time on Twitter, all the time on Facebook. I know, but it, I, it's, it's time. I mean, I work eight hours. So it's time. Yeah, I you can't, just don't have any time. I can't get off till 3.30. I can't get over here till 4. And we're done the traffic. At 4. Yeah. Yeah, the film crew goes home by 5. They're yeah. cleaning up at 4.30. So yeah. It's, it's, it's hard. Oh, man. I know he's busy. I know he's... But you're just... You're talking about your best friend. I miss his old cars, though. I know. Well, they miss you. And you were a good technician. We never had problems with your cars and your brakes. And the things that you did when you were working on them worked good. See, you come back, we can put you on the artwork for all the models being built. You have your own little collection. <laughs> we can go upstairs in the attic on 14th Street and play Hot Wheels like we used to. That's great oh, stuff. Do you guys know why we're here? No. Probably another 45-day build. Oh, well, I'm not doing a 45-day build. That's not going to happen. I'm not either. I you didn't have anything to, to do with this? The paint. And put it together? No. That last one, you barely even got done if it wasn't it for Doug. Doug helped. Right there. Doug helped. Doug together. helped. And then the last one we had I to do, George, to was way late on the metal shop. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm always on time. And anyways, I thought we were here for lunch. So we're expecting lunch now, right? God, get off the what? lunch thing. It doesn't matter. No, yes, it None does. Of this we're here son? for a reason, food. Yes, I saw your son. He was at my house a couple weeks ago. So we don't worry about lunch. They'll be here soon enough. This is the biggest day in Graveyard Cars history. Here we go, another 45-day build. And look at the plates. <laughs> That's good. Wow. What is good about it? It's all intact. It's it. original. Yeah. It'll never be an original again. And the air works. We'll destroy it. Why the are you so angry? Great. I'm not angry. He's always it's negative. It's got potential. Yeah, it, isn't it? it is said that when one door closes, another door opens. I'm not a big fan of all the philosophical silliness, but it always has been true. And in this case, it's never been more true. Take a feast on that bad boy. Yeah. Chromium diome side. Look at chromium. Hey. Chromium diome side, and I have lunch yeah. in the car for you because we keep our news. word. You guys have been doing an excellent job. Appreciate it very much. You uh, <laughs> happen to notice anything down there on the <laughs> license plate? What does it say? What is I, it? I, 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 oh, you can read? Okay, that's good. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, my dreams were crushed to being able to uh, literally crushed to be able to bring my old Charger back to life. As you know, my original car is long gone. Oh, sweet Yep. This is it. This is the big one. Just like Rocky Balboa, full circle back to the old neighborhood. I have found the 1970 Dodge Charger that will be my tribute. FK5 white top burn orange interior car. I've been waiting 35 years to find the right. <laughs> You've been waiting 35 years to do a tribute car? 1970 Dodge Charger XP, not an XS or an XH, an XP car. This car right here is going to be the burnt orange white top, burnt orange interior bucket seat console, original Charger, anatomically exactly the way my car was when I had it and enjoyed it. Right down to the crushed velvet tuck and roll interior from Sweet Peas Upholstery. Sweet Peas Upholstery. <laughs> Now, when Royal talks about Sweet Pea Upholstery, that was actually the name of the company. It was a friend of his, um, his mom, uh, that started this little upholstery shop back in the 70s. You think we can You're go dig her up? You're not gonna make me that, are you really? <laughs> yes, I'm gonna redo that. This, we're going back. We're going back, Rolo. I'm gonna have nightmares now. This is the old, this is the old day, me and Rolo, back. Now, this was a cool little place. When we were kids, it was the old Springfield Airport, and it had a cafe, a little diner. When it all went down and they shut down the airport, that diner was rented to Faye, and she started Sweet Pea Upholstery. Well, if you're gonna make me relive it, I might as well help you on it. You gonna give me a hand with the old car? Yeah, I will. Now, Graveyard Cars and Mark Warman, and my best friend, who is now back at the shop, is going to help me restore this car live in front of all of you people next season. I want you to announce it right now. I want you to look at that guy right down there. 
And what you say, I'll my be, name is Royal Yoakum, <laughs> and I am back at Graveyard Car right there. And I can do, do it, because you my can't. Na my name is Royal Yoakum, and I'm back at Graveyard Car. It's going to be a party. Hey, yeah. no. Hey, no. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, you're back, and there's going to be a party. Hey, no. Hey, no. Oh, no. Did mm. your wife tell you not to do that anymore? That's the Michael Jackson finisher. Why everybody coming at me for a little bit of dance move? Okay, they didn't do that with Michael Jackson back in the day, right? Everybody want to be a dancer, nobody want to be a dancer, right? What about that question? <laughs> <laughs> so this is a major big day in the life of Mark Warman, and I hope my best friend, Royal Yoakum. I get to rebuild a Charger, finally, that, um, shoot, we grew up in it, right? I mean, yeah. when, I, when I met Royal, we discovered the car setting behind a house on A Street, uh, just Street. after we, uh, what was it, B? B Street. On B Street, yeah, yeah, B Street, right next to uh, Buell Chapel, where they uh, buried my dad when I was 12, so if you want to talk about that, we can. No, I'm. And what do you think about the burnt orange? I, I mean, that's great. I mean, that's going to cause me nightmares and scar me for the rest <laughs> of my life. Why would that be? <laughs> oh, because we did All some. All the work. We did some strange things. Yeah, we did. All do. the work we did, and we never did nothing strange. If somebody would have said in 19, 80 that 40 years from now you're going to be standing in a shop with a car that you're going to tribute to your original charger with your best friend royal and they're going to film it on <laughs> and make a television show out of it i would have thought that was ins insane 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 but it is i remember sitting sitting <laughs> in the sitting in the carport saying you were going to work on cars the rest of your life and you have we did have a little carport over on 14th street Royal used to hang out with me all the time there here we are 40 years later, number one chromium diome side. My mom would love this minute. She'd oh, be sitting absolutely. there bawling her eyes out. She loved my charger. Absolutely. When Alyssa gave me that burnt orange charger model, she called me up crying. My sister cried. And it's funny because I talk about all the time about how you know these cars can be the fabric of our lives, but I mean, I'm just as guilty of that. I'm not above that. Everything, my coming of adulthood, in a, in a manner of speaking, was in that car. You learned about working, you learned about girlfriends, you learned about love, you learned about everything. You learned about Royal never being on time. You go down to pick him up and he was still upstairs asleep in it his bedroom. It happened once. It happened. Every... Okay, twice. Okay. <laughs> twice a day I tried to get him out. This is the underdog story. I didn't realize when I got rid of the car I was gonna become an underdog, but I have. Millions of people around the world are pulling for us to be able to get this car done. And the thing that makes it just the greatest thing in my mind, the thing that really pushes us to a dream come true, is that my best friend Royal is here to help me restore the car, and we have the preeminent team ever assembled at Graveyard Cars in the history of Graveyard Cars, all together working to make full circle Graveyard Cars punch into next season. Nobody will see this one coming. So I want to see if I got all this straight. We got one more little one to drop on everybody. We're gonna redo an original tribute to my charger, burnt orange, white top, burnt orange interior. Royal is back for season 14. And he just told me he got engaged. Yeah, I did. My man told me he would never go get married again after the last time. No. And, well, you I said it's gonna be. I said I'd be married someday. He said it'd be a very special woman. So what I'd like to do. Look into, the, look into that camera right over there and say hi to your fiance. <laughs> That's all you gotta uh, say, just say hi. Uh, hi, Rhonda. Hi, Rhonda. <laughs> Bye, Rhonda. We gotta go restore cars. See you guys next season. <laughs> Kick a name, take a name.